The COVID-19 pandemic has impacted every aspect of our lives, health, finances, education, employment, even our personal relationships. Our next guest is a licensed marriage and family therapist and author of Finding Your Relationship Fix. Welcome, Chris Matthews. So very nice to meet you today. Definitely. I'm glad to be here. Thanks for having me. So you're the man with all the answers, right? I have a lot of them based on experience. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I know you do. Um, you know, I said it earlier that the pandemic has affected everything in our lives, mm -hmm. uh, including our personal relationships. Um, talk to me about what you're seeing and hearing. I'm, I, my assumption is that some of those effects, especially when it comes to personal relationships, mm -hmm. are beneficial and some of them not so much. Yeah, you make a great point. So there are some positives. Let's start with the positives first. Couples have been forced to quarantine together, as you know, at the beginning of the pandemic. And at that point, you're having to face the good, the bad, and the ugly. And for a lot of couples, that's made them stronger. Some of the negatives look like couples who were traveling for work or were not accustomed to being in the home, and they're now having to be forced to face those issues, and they're now repelling from each other, and that leads to divorce and separation. Mm -hmm. um, and Sometimes, though, having that that tension exposed mm -hmm. is a good thing because it forces you to to address it, right? Yeah, yeah. And you see an uptick in counseling because of the pandemic. A lot of couples that I work with, the pandemic has made them come into session because at this point, it's either we're going to do this and build and grow, or we're going to separate and divorce. So it's really applied that pressure to couples and married partners and dating partners to make a decision. Are you, are, are you finding that people are, you know, so, I'm always surprised sometimes by how long people can just deal with what I feel like, yeah. that's crazy. I, I mean, yeah. or how can you be satisfied, you know, f uh, ha having to deal with that every day or arguing about that all the time? You guys got to, are, are, are you... Are you seeing a greater willingness for people to address those issues or are they just fighting and then flying, I guess, as, as yeah. you know? So, so what, what I'm finding based on the work that I'm doing with couples, a lot of individuals or couples coming into therapy, they either are going to face the issues because they can't run from them anymore. I, I do mm -hmm. with a lot of couples where there's infidelity. So imagine if you are traveling abroad or traveling around the country, and you're able to have a separate life, the pandemic has made it where you can't have two lives anymore. You're having to be mm -hmm. forced at that point to have that one life. And people who are all over social media can get the understanding that you're going to not have that freedom of talking to the, the side boyfriend or girlfriend at work because your wife or your boyfriend or your husband is gonna be now seeing you all the time and picking up the phone. And I'm getting a lot of people who come into therapy because of infidelity. It's information that was found that was easily hidden before. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think there are people that must have found that all that togetherness was not necessarily yeah. for them, whether it was just about the spouse or the significant mm -hmm. other. Maybe mm -hmm. it was just about the whole family because the kids were home too. And there was all right. that responsibility. Right. But there are a lot of couples that are resilient and the pandemic has made it where those couples who are strong became stronger. I even take myself, for example, my wife and I, we had to become stronger working with the kids and you're trying to manage a business or the office from home while doing the tutoring or the schooling online. Mm -hmm. And that can be extremely tough for couples, but it can also be rewarding because the resilient couples are able to have that other badge, that other notch on the belt. Look what we were able to accomplish. And they turn toward each other. So there's been a lot of great things in the pandemic. I was listening to the radio the other day and they said this year, there are more weddings scheduled and planned this year than in the last 30 years. Now some mm -hmm. of that's because of the backlog, but I believe people who I've counseled as well have said, hey, we met during quarantine. We were forced to spend days in and days out together and really truly get to know each other beyond just physical intimacy, you have to talk to that person. They're the only one you're interacting with for months, weeks at a time. 
what would you tell, uh, we're having this conversation about, you know, the things that were exposed during the pandemic or things we learned. What are the important keys to having a healthy relationship? Definitely. Now, there's got to be some foundational things that, that need to be there. Yes, you're totally spot on. And that's actually what my whole book is about. The mm -hmm. four core foundational feelings that need to be present for any relationship to be healthy. It's just four. The first is going to be safety and security. You have to be safe and secure in your partner and within yourself in that relationship. Next, the ability to feel heard. A lot of couples come in and they just want to hear each other and they want to be felt. Mm -hmm. And the third is going to be understanding. Being able to know why my partner does what they do, why they say what they say, because our minds tend to go to worst case scenarios and we think or feel like there's a problem or something's wrong with me or myself. And that understanding piece tends to be very important for people just to feel comfortable in the relationship. Last but not least, love and care. Mm -hmm. You want to be able to express love and care. And that's going to be the most critical piece. I don't have to question based on my actions that my wife doesn't know I love her. And it's more mm -hmm. about love actions. People are familiar with the five love languages. In my mm -hmm. book, I talk about five love actions. You have to be able to reciprocate. Love isn't just a feeling. It's actually a behavior. You need yeah. to have love as a lifestyle. Love is a lifestyle. I, I, I like that. You know, there's for a long time, there was a stigma against asking for help uh, mm -hmm. in the African-American community. Um, you know, some people would say, well, they'll go to the church maybe and ask right. the pastor. But what they really needed, um, you know, probably some more professional mm -hmm. uh, guidance. Do you see that shifting? at all? People it, being it, more willing, perhaps, because yeah. they've seen uh, more well-known people talk about their issues and how they've worked through them? Mm -hmm. It is shifting. And a lot of the past, they give, let's give the faith-based Oh, believe me, I, I, I do. I, I grew up in the Baptist church, yeah. and I do. Well, well, giving them the credit because pastors are making the, the referral for counseling. I mm -hmm. get a lot of pastors that refer couples through my premarital workshops and retreats before they will even mm -hmm. present marriage. Mm -hmm. or, uh, so a lot of pastors, a lot of faith-based members are, are, are now establishing clinicians or uh, uh, therapeutic programs in the church. So that shift is occurring. And then when you look at celebrities, I always look at how Jay-Z and Beyonce, when they were going through their marital trials mm -hmm. and tribulations, they, they were vocal. They said, hey, we went to help. We went to get help. The Obamas, uh, Michelle and Barack Obama talked on national TV about how they found a counselor. So that's mm -hmm. definitely helpful when you see political figures and musicians and people that we look up to humbling themselves to seek out the professional help. Yeah, to say, look, there were some things we needed. We needed help on and we got it because this was important <laughs> to us. I want to just give you uh, a little bit of props, too because you are paying it forward, passing on the torch. You've established uh, two scholarships through uh, Pfeiffer University for black men who want to become therapists. Why is that something that was so important to you? So that's really the core of why I got into the field. My wife and I became pregnant very young. We were in college, I was a sophomore, she was a freshman. And when I went to the school community center counseling facility, there was no one in there to look like me. And when I went to my pastor, they did a great job of praying, but there were no counselors that looked like me. Mm -hmm. So beyond getting the training myself, I realized that I need to help other Black men, other persons of color realize, hey, you can have a, a lucrative profession, be able to provide for yourself. A lot of men didn't go to our counseling or don't because they think that you can't make a good living for your families. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the average rate of, you know, uh, salary for marriage and family therapists is, is well above starting out in the 60s and then you go up to almost six figures so you can make mm -hmm. money and help people and I yeah. want to inform African-American men and women that hey this is a field that you're needed in and that's why I do the scholarships all right such a pleasure talking with you I think that you do have a gift that you are sharing with every, it sounds to me like everybody that you can Folks can find out more about the work you're doing at chrisamatthews.com, right? Mm -hmm. And the book, Finding Your Relationship Fix.
Chris Matthews, what a pleasure to meet you. Thank you so much for talking with us this afternoon. Thanks for having me. Sandra Bookman and Here and Now will be right back. <laughs>